Hi, I'm Brandon Donaldson, and have you been wanting to use the Dart language on the front end and back end of your project development? Well, in this video, I'll be covering the debugging, building, and deploying the Dart web server to Elastic Beanstalk. So, let's get started. So, the very first thing I want to cover is the source that I'm using for this tutorial, and that's located in my GitHub repo. So, I'll leave a link to this repo in the description below. While I'm on this repo, let me just cover a couple more quick notes about it. If I scroll down, I can see the project configuration settings. I can see my debugging notes. And what I want to highlight is the initialization that I used to build this project. I installed Dart. The Dart tools would be required. I configured AWS. So the AWS and EB CLI tools are required. And I covered the notes on how I initialized my Elastic Beanstalk project. It's pretty simple to set up a project, and I won't cover that today in this video. Okay, so let's get started with the debugging experience. The first order of business, I want to cover the directory and contents that make up my project. So to start with, the server directory, which is my Dart project, which contains the Dart web server. And I'll cover these in greater detail in a little bit. Next up is Travis.yaml, and this is my build configuration. And then I have a Docker file, which goes with the debug docker container hyphen config file. And these two files I use to emulate the Docker configuration on EC2. Then I have the Docker run configuration, which is the Elastic Beanstalk Docker configuration file. As you can see, the project is pretty simple. So let me go into the server directory and just look at the source code that makes up the Dart web server. So the server directory is a Dart project. It has a pubsec.yaml, which is the Dart instructions for setting up and downloading the libraries for the project. And then I have the lib directory or the library directory, which has the server.dart. And the server has a main, which is the entry point to the program. And if I look at that, I have a handler that handles the requests when they come in. And that handle request will percolate down to handle git. And then handle git, what it does is it checks the path and compares to the paths that I have declared. So I have one path for forward slash API. I have one path for forward slash API git message. You could call this a simple routing configuration. And if it doesn't match any of those paths, it will go to the root per se. It will say the Dart web server works. As you can see, this is a really simple Dart project with an HTTP web server. Okay, so that covers the basics of my architecture and the source that I'm using to run the web server. Okay, up next is how can I debug all the pieces together so I know it works well, and then I can ship it off to Elastic Beanstalk. So you might be thinking, how can I debug all these pieces in VS Code and so forth? And I'll be covering four different ways to debug this. I'll start off by showing how to run it from VS Code, and then I'll run it from Terminal. I'll use the EB CLI to use EB Local Run to run it, and that will emulate the Docker environment on EC2. Okay, so let's get started to debugging this environment. Okay, what I wanna do next is debug it with VS Code. So I'm gonna go over to the run context and go up to the launchers. But before I launch the process, let me just review what I have in the launchers. So I'm gonna click on the gear and go to the launch configurations. In the launch configurations, I have one program with an entry point of server.dart. And this will launch the Dart program. So that's really easy and simple to configure. And when you download the GitHub project, you'll have the VS Code launcher as well. So I'm going to close that. I'm ready to launch the process. So I'm going to go over and start the launch process. So the process launched. Now let me dial that up in Chrome and verify it's working. So I'm going to go to that endpoint. Okay, great, it works. So I'm gonna go try API and, okay, great, it works. So I'm gonna try the other paths that I have set here and I'm gonna go to try API. Okay, great, that works. Now that I have that working, I wanna try the JSON. Okay, great, it works as well. Okay, let's say I wanna go to forward slash API and set a breakpoint here just before it gets to that so I can inspect the URI. Okay, so let me see how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page and it should break at this breakpoint. Awesome, it paused on the breakpoint. Now I can inspect the variables in the stack on the left over here. As you can see, I can see the URI, which is forward slash API forward slash get message. And I can look at all the properties 
and the HTTP request. So that was pretty cool. Now that I've done this, I want to debug it in the terminal. So how would I do that? But before I get there, I want to stop this process so I can run it from the terminal. So I want to go up and hit on stop. Okay, great. The process has stopped. Now I'm ready to run it from the terminal. Now that I want to run it from the terminal, how would I do that? So I'm going to go over to the files, and this is one of my favorite ways to get there. And the reason why I do this is I don't want to have to add the path to my command in the terminal. So I right click on the server.dart and go open in terminal. What this does is drops me into the lib directory, as you can see in my terminal lib there. So now I can type in dart, assuming I have my dart tools installed, and then I can say server.dart. And that starts up the process all the same. Okay, I want to verify that, so I'll go over to Chrome and reload the web page. Okay, great. Let me just check the other routes just for fun to make sure they work as well. Okay, the root works. Try API. API works. And API get message works. That's fantastic. So that was pretty easy to debug that way as well. So what's next? Now I want to debug it like I would as if it were running in the EC2 container. And this will tell me if everything is wired up and working correctly in my project configuration. Okay, now I want to run it with EB Local Run. But in order to run it with EB Local Run, I have to have created an environment and application on Elastic Beanstalk. And if you look at the GitHub repo, and I've already dialed up the instructions on the right here, under Configure AWS and EBC Alive, I talk about how I create these environments. And so what this allows me to do is emulate the Elastic Beanstalk with EB Local Run. Okay, but before I run EB Local Run, I want to talk about the Docker Run configuration that gets deployed to Elastic Beanstalk or EC2, which sets up the container configuration. So I will open up the Docker Run configuration. In this configuration, I have one volume defined, and it's named Web App. It points to my source directory or the root of the project and defines that as var app current. So in the parent container or host container, all the source will be available in the var app current directory. So onto the container definitions, which are hosted on the VM. I'm using a pre-built Docker container that's built by Google, and it's a dark configuration. The second most important piece here is the mount point. Now the mount point, I reference the source volume, which is var app current in the host container, and I map that to forward slash app. So in the Docker container, the child container, I have forward slash app. All the source that is in the var app current will now be available to the child container. Why is this important? Because when I come down and I want to call the command that I want to execute, I need to reference the app container. So I call dart and I reference app, which has all the source of var app current, which has all the source of my project. So app server lib server.dart will execute my web server process. So that was pretty easy. It's a little bit like Inception, so you can get lost in the configuration quite easily, but over time it gets easier. Okay, last but not least, I have port mappings. So I tell Docker, to set up a proxy from the host container of 80, which will point to the Dart web server, which runs on 8080. Now that I've done a high level overview of the Docker configuration for Elastic Beanstalk, let's emulate the process locally by running EB local run. So how would I do that? So I'm gonna go over to the run context and I'm gonna open up a terminal at the root of my project. So I'll focus on the terminal tab, and what I'll do is create a new console in the terminal, and what I wanna do is go eb local run. What this will do is take this configuration and run it. And if you notice, the same exact output renders to the console as I would when I run the process with VS Code. Okay, awesome. How would I test this? Would I test it on port 8080? That is the mystery. Well, I already know. So let's test that. So I'm going to go over, and if I were to reload this, it won't work because this is the Docker container port, not the host container port. So I'll reload it just to show you that it doesn't work. Oh, 
Oh, it does work. Oh, I forgot to stop the previous process in the other tab. So I'm gonna go back to that and go Control C. It stops, so I'll reload it now, it should work. Yep, that's correct. Okay, that's good to note because you can have more than one web server running in different contexts. Okay, now I can test it on port 80. So I'll go over to the browser and load that port up. Okay, great, port 80 works. So I'm gonna go try API, that works. Okay, API, okay, the message, the port is green. So fantastic, DB local run works perfectly. Now I know I can deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk and have everything working when it arrives. So let's do that. What would I have to do to deploy this application? So I'm gonna start off by going to the Travis CI instructions and look at the build process and talk about that in a little bit more detail. Okay, now that I'm in the Travis.yaml file, let's look at the language that I'm using. I'm using Dart and it's the stable version. So the first thing I wanna do in the install process is I wanna CD into the server because that's my Dart project and then I'll run pubgit. Pubgit doesn't have much to do, but I run it anyways in this context. After that, I back up to the root directory because I don't want to deploy just the server directory. I wanna deploy everything in this context. You could do this in a myriad of ways, but I wanna cover a simple configuration. In the script, I'm just highlighting PWD and LS for debugging, and the magical step is the deploy method. Travis really makes it easy to deploy to Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so there are a couple magical bits here, and that's the secure properties. And what are those? Those are basically, if I come down to the bottom to my notes, are using the Travis CLI to encrypt my access key and secret key, and basically those turn into hashes, and I paste this here. So if anybody else were to get these variables, they couldn't use them unless they are part of this build process. So that's so it really makes it easy to, to add secure properties to my build process. Okay, the next thing I set is the US West. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is mention the region. Now the app environment and bucket are all in the same region. So once I have all these properties set, all I need to do is commit and push it up and we can see the process build. So I don't have any changes queued up, so let me go into the readme. And what I'll do is add a space. And what we'll do is commit that space by saving. And I'm gonna go over to the VCS controls and commit this, update readme and use git lens to push it up to the master branch. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to Travis. And there it goes. Travis saw that I've updated master and it is now building the project. Okay, great, it's running the deployment and I can go to S3 and check to see the delivery of the zip. Okay, there it is. If I were to download this zip, the file contents would look just like my project structure that I deployed. So I could download that and inspect it to verify all the bits are getting sent up to Elastic Beanstalk like I want them. Okay, the next step is once that deploys, it will go into the Elastic Beanstalk dash and you'll see the health start to spin. And what that means is it's pushing it out to the EC2 instances based on my configuration settings here. And I won't cover that in great detail, but what it does is it uploads to the EC2 instance, what I just pushed up via Travis, and it will replace the application. Awesome. It has deployed successfully. It checks on port 80 to see if it's running, and it is. So let's just load up that web page and see if it's running. Okay, fantastic. I've got my Dart web server hosted on Elastic Beanstalk and I can see it works. So let me just check the other routes and it works and get message works. Awesome, I can now point my application logic to this endpoint. So that covers my debugging, building and deploying the Dart web server to Elastic Beanstalk. As you can see, it's a really simple project configuration and deployment process to get it up and going. Keep your eyes peeled. I'll be using this with my cross-platform development tutorials with Flutter in the future. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on debugging, and I'll catch you later.